Hey you guys, movie retrospective time. So today, the movie that won pretty overwhelmingly in the poll was the 1994 adaptation of Frankenstein, Mary Shelley's Frankenstein, to yeah. be precise. So I don't know if people voted, because I do put like what year it is, especially if it's something like Frankenstein that's had like a million adaptations. So I don't know if you guys knew that this was the one that we were gonna be talking about, or if you were hoping that we were gonna talk about the Boris Karloff one. I don't really know, but this one won. Uh, I saw it come up on HBO Max, and I was like, oh, I haven't seen that since it came out. Like I saw it in the theater. And I remembered it being okay, but I didn't really remember all that much about it. So I was kind of like interested to revisit it. And had you seen it or no? Yeah, I had seen it, but I, I, I guess I didn't like it. And, and there was a lot of the stuff that I didn't uh, remember. So probably what it was is that um, 94, I was in the army and they were probably playing it. And I caught a bit of it, you know, on, on VHS. And I was like, nah, you know, they don't like it. You know what I mean? I stopped watching it. Um, but seeing it again last night, it was good. It's real good. I liked it. Now, the thing about it, though, it's like way, way, way more over the top than I remembered uh, as far as very, very stagey acting and like really just kind of like some of it even like veers over into camp. But that's kind of OK, because I kind of feel like that's what makes it entertaining. It's supposed to be almost like a period piece. I and, guess and it's, it's almost like operatic. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, kind of. I know it's, it, it, what I think it was trying to do it was trying to be kind of like um, uh, remember um, the Dracula that had come out what was that 93 92 92 it was trying to be like that where it was supposed to feel I think a little bit like an old movie but it was all brand new with color and everything you know but the acting was kind of like old movie from the 30s yeah, so yeah. that's kind of like the spirit in which yeah. I took it because I know like I've watched other people because this very famously like when it came out like it made its money back but it got like a lot of criticism even back in the 90s for being just like way over the top and for being because uh, Kenneth Branagh who plays Victor Frankenstein and he directed it as well. Uh, you can tell that he's like a complete raging egomaniac on this because he's pretty much like every single scene of creation I want to be like shirtless and like showing my pecs and like yeah. covered with liquid and stuff like that was And it, he's, he's just like swishing around all over the place the like director, though? Make it, Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Okay, yeah, yeah, It's the director and that he okay. was main actor in it, too yeah, okay. Well, because the thing about Kenneth Branagh is that and the reason that he ended up directing this because I don't know if you knew But this was the same uh, production company. It's Francis Ford Coppola's uh, production company because they had done done Dracula and yeah, because okay. it had been so successful they're like okay well next we're gonna do, do a Frankenstein. Frankenstein they okay. were gonna do all of them yeah so that fits then then it's what I thought it was yeah they were okay. gonna do all of them I think the reason that Dracula probably worked better other than you know Keanu and Winona being kind of like miscast a little bit yeah, was because the Francis Ford Coppola's Dracula was very stylized in the way that it looked like visually so you could tell that it wasn't necessarily trying to be like realistic or anything yeah. I kind of felt like this one maybe it was it was supposed to be like that I yeah, think. well, it, I think it was, but, but it I didn't think it'll come off that way. Yeah, yeah, I think if it had been more stylized, right. it yeah. probably would have come across better. Yeah, probably, right, yeah. Um, and also, I will say that I think, one of, and I do like this movie, I do, but I can understand like criticisms of it where they just say that it was just like wildly over the top, like he could have like reined it in some, and I do agree with that. I think another thing that kind of like let it down a little bit is that Robert De Niro as the creature in this, he's never given a name, like as the monster, he's so good and so subtle that everyone else like shrieking and like sw and like sweeping around and all these like crazy camera movements and stuff, like the, the juxtaposition is a little bit, gives you a little bit of whiplash too. Well, I think I think they're trying to give him some bunch of gravitas, like he's the only sane motherfucker in the movie. Yeah, everyone and, else and, is just like a screaming and, loon. <laughs> yeah. And he is, he is, he's 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 kind of the best character. Moral. He's the best part of in, in a weird way. Although know, he did kill the kid, and he did fucking frame the other woman. I mean, he did do some evil things, but he was kind of kind of rationalizing it, like you know. Well, I'm not a human being. You made me. Daddy and doesn't then, love and me. And you threw me away and now this and that. And, <laughs> and, and then the people are all trying to kill me and, you know, and, and uh, you know, you do what I say or something, or something bad's going to, you need to pay for your sin against God for making me, you know. And, um, yeah, when when the creature gets into it, when he starts talking in the movie, the movie really picks up, if you ask me. It's, it's good when he start, starts playing his role in it. 
I think it should have happened earlier, but they're trying to make it like the book. And it's supposed, based on what you said, that this is supposed to be one of the more, one of the more faithful adaptations of the book. It is. They did change some things, uh, which maybe we'll get into that a little bit. But um, overall, because you know, honestly, like most people know, like the Boris Karloff Frankenstein and stuff like that was. Not, it, you know, obviously it was kind of loosely based on the novel, but a lot of the adaptations, like, leave things out. Like, yeah. I'm not sure because I think there is a movie called Frankenstein Unbound, mm. uh, which I think was maybe the same universe as Dracula Untold, which I actually okay. really liked. I haven't heard much good about Frankenstein Unbound, but I haven't seen it, so I can't really say. I think that one is a little bit faithful to the book, too, but so maybe that has it, too. But this is the only Frankenstein adaptation that I've seen, and I'm sure there's other ones, and people will tell me what they are, that actually has the framing device of the Arctic Exposi Expedition. Yeah. Because if you guys haven't read the novel, I mean, it's been a very long time since I've read it. I probably I read it in school, and I think I read it one time in my 20s. But the whole thing... The whole novel is actually told as a flashback, is told as like a story, like this ship, this guy is like trying to find, uh, what's he trying to find? Like a, like a, not the Northwest, pa North Northwest Passage, but just like something through the I fucking forgot, Arctic Circle or whatever. Like he's, so he's up there on his, the terror expedition or whatever. And um, they find the monster. Well, then they find Dr. Frankenstein like chasing the monster and Dr. Frankenstein like while he's dying, um, tells them this whole story. You know what I mean? And then the captain is writing all of the whole story, which is a novel length, in case you yeah. didn't know, like to his sister. So, More so that's found footage type. Movie. Yeah, it's like a found footage, which, like I said, very, very popular, like they that, that, that epistolary then. style. Well, Dr Dracula is completely like letters and journal entries and uh, you know, jur and which diaries. Tell you, man, and stuff. when I was a kid, when I was real a voracious reader, you know, when I was younger, that shit was so tedious. I didn't like the that kind of stuff, with the exception of fucking Lovecraft. I liked Lovecraft, but it, he was a more updated version of that. The, this shit was usually tedious to read. If it's done well, I like it, but a, a lot, lot of, of times it's not done well. Yeah, a lot of times it's a whole lot of nothing. Nothing really happens in the book. It's, it's just, you know what I mean? I, I haven't read this one, but I, usually in this style, like the Dracula book, when you read it, nothing really happens. Nothing's in fucking... Nothing's in well because nothing's time. just in regular yeah, yeah like everything is like oh and then this shit you're reading reports about something that about happened. something that happened you're right, yeah. and I know why they did that because like I said that was a very popular like literary trope back then because it gave the story like oh my god the shit really happened yeah. you know what I mean it gave it so it's like newspaper articles so like you said it's like the same as the appeal of found footage yeah. um, it was just written so I get why they did that but the thing about and Dracula, excuse me, and and the creature reads reads a book like that also in the book. So there's a book in the book. The creature is reading. Yeah, Dr. I think Frankenstein's he's fucking. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, what's his journal? And that's how he finds out who he is and how he came about. So it's kind of funny. They got found footage in the found footage movie. So meta. Yeah, it's meta. And I don't think, like I said, I haven't, it's been probably 20 years since I've read the book. I've remembered like some things in here being different. This is pretty accurate, um, but they did change up some things like, spe uh, especially toward the end, like having to do with like the creation of the bride and stuff. But I don't remember, cause it's kind of a minor detail, but I don't remember in the book if that's how the monster found Dr. Frankenstein again, mm -hmm. like through his journal. Maybe it was, but I can't really, I don't remember. I don't actually remember how he ended up finding him again, but it's like I said, that's kind of like a small detail. It's probably why I don't remember it. But yeah, so I had seen this in the theater and remember like, I was like, eh, that was okay or whatever. I said, oh, it's like really close to the book, which I thought was kind of cool because we hadn't really seen that like in 1994. I was like, wow, they even had like the, the Arctic Expo expedition and they did a lot of the um of the monster like being able to talk and like learning how to read and like being more of like philosophical and but yeah i agree that like when de niro shows up like the movie like is elevated several yeah you know things because prior to that like as he's kind of like a um like a calming influence because this yeah. is a very i'm not gonna go like say this is like a full-on like baz lerman kind of like phantasmagoria freak show or anything where everybody's like running around and singing and waving their arms and everything but it's kind of in that direction you know what i'm saying well fucking mary shelley you would think you know when you when you see the helen bonham carter fucking character in there you you think that that's probably how how fucking shelley was 
you know, and the way the way she probably wrote her characters, you know, kind of slightly over the top and hysterical. But people were like that back then. Yeah, they were yeah. just like, well, wasn't even much to do, so you had the, you know. Even Doctor Frankenstein, I think, in the original book, it's like every time he saw like the horror of what he had done, he'd like pass out. Oh, he had yeah, a, he yeah. passed out. Passed he out. was a constantly fucking yeah. passing out, yeah, like, were, all the time. Uh, they were they were wilting plants. Yeah, well, people, probably, it, but the you know the the health was bad too yeah. <laughs> because of like the the conditions. Late seventeen hundreds, fucking early eighteen hundreds. You know, people, rich people were drama queens, man. Yeah, the young rich people were drama. So if you're coming yeah. at it from that point of yeah. view, but I was okay. Well, the thing about it was that Francis Ford Coppola was initially supposed to direct this one too. But then I guess he was like, fuck it, I don't really feel like it. Because he, he was, like well, it. he was more into Dracula. Yeah. Like, Dracula was his passion project. He wanted to do a Frankenstein, but then he's like, I don't know if, if I'm as passionate about Frankenstein as I am about Dracula. He didn't really have a vision for it. So they decided to go with Kenneth Branagh. Now, Kenneth Branagh, who at this point, like, this was 1994, he's generally known for being in Shakespeare adaptations, which most of which are very good, like Henry V, and he did, like, a whole bunch of them. And he had also been... Do you guys remember that movie Dead Again? I think he did it with his wife at the time, Emma Thompson. And I remember that being good, other than the end being ridiculous. But I haven't seen it in a long time. That's another one I kind of have to rewatch because I think I saw that in the theater, too. But so he was, like, a very, very well respected uh shakespearean style actor and director so they gave him this and i feel like you know well i it might have been okay if he was just like directing it but the fact that he was the star of it too i think it was just too much for him to resist you know what i'm saying <laughs> like running I, 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 like I, running around with no shirt all the I time liked it. i liked the movie i did though. too i, I did too I, I think, i'm just saying that you have to go into it like expecting that it's going to be think, like super over the top yeah i think i think i think he called it in terms of tone but i also agree that had it been a little more visual vi uh, you know visually distorted kind of like the original dracula was or stylist stylistically and everything you'd know that you're not we're not talking about the real universe we're talking about a fanciful universe written by a, a basically a teenage girl back in a long time ago. That's although I will and, say of all the classic monster like original novels, it's a good one. I think Frankenstein is probably the best written. Yeah. Although I, you could make a case for um, Jekyll and Hyde, although that's a novella, it's like pretty short. But I think Frankenstein is the best written one. She thought about it. In my opinion, she thought about it. You know what I mean? What would happen if you created this person? Would it, it would consider you its father, wouldn't it? And then people would reject it. And then what would it feel? And you know, so she she. I mean, she then essentially how would it even with you? invented then, uh, science yeah. fiction. Right. It's good. Yeah. How would you get the electricity? This and as he does see in the old original movie, you know, he, he fucking sends him up through the roof and a lightning bolt hits him. But in this, no, it was done with electric eels. Like, which, Which yeah, totally fair. Which, I mean, I liked okay. that kind of like variation. Yeah. It was a little bit weird, like yeah. I that he had this massive like bag of electric eels just like yeah, up on his roof in, all the time. And then, and then he was stealing amniotic fluid from women when their water broke and getting all kinds of you know. So it's biotech, man, fucking biotech. Yeah. And it was also mixed with like magic and alchemy. Some of that was involved. He was, it was, it was, it was, it was technology. But uh, Dr. Frankenstein was studying like old, you know, arcane lore and stuff from alchemists. So it was a mixture of everything. Yeah. So it's like when he went to originally yeah. went to the university in Ingolstadt, um, he kind of wanted to be like, hey, these like hundreds of years old books like, you know, Paracelsus and everything like that. He's like, can't we do this, that and the other? He wanted to go like a more philosophical or like you said, alchemical route with it, yeah. whereas his uh, you know, instructors and stuff are like, man, we don't do that shit anymore. It's like, we do our own yeah. stupid shit, but it's like, we don't do that stupid shit yeah. anymore. You know what I mean? But Mary <laughs> Bring called, on the leeches. Mary called it, though. It was, you yeah. know, uh, it was bioelectrical and chemical and biochemical and well, and, and, and it had, you know, g genes were involved. But she didn't know anything about genes or DNA back then. But yeah, yeah even Darwin didn't fluid, know about that. Amniotic fluid. Put a motherfucker in a damn kettle pressurize him she's pressure it was pressurized like it was yeah, a, he put him like in a, a crock pot like a big <laughs> pot. and then they had electric eels come in you know what i mean and there's it parts of them are grounded and there's a fucking positive and negative and then the, the eels fucking come in and shock the shit out of him and it wakes him up and, and it, there he he's goes like wow i was sleeping because he was up. in a womb he was in a fake womb 
Yeah, it's essentially what that was. I mean, it looked it looked kind of like a sarcophagus. Yeah, it, it was like a big sarcophagus. It was a, it was a sarcophagus slash uh, instant pot. He he. It, to me, what it looked like, and then it had a big respirator on the top, fucking breathing oxygen into him. So, if you ask me, he made a mechanical womb, and then shot. Yeah, it. I guess that. The, that's, yeah, that's that's what, that's what it was supposed to be. That's what it was supposed to be. Yeah. But so, uh, fun fact, though, I don't know if a lot of people a womb who have big enough to give birth to an adult. That's, I guess that was the lungs above it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, I guess that's what it was. Yeah. Yeah. How cool would it be if somebody did like a purely, I'm sure somebody's probably yeah. done this somewhere, but um, like a purely bioorganic kind of like Frankenstein yeah. where they actually like built yeah. <laughs> like a big giant, like a like a David Cronenbergian kind of yeah. like fucking fleshy one. I just womb. think it's, ama- I think it's a, an amazing that just some rich teenage girl in the 1700s could fucking just kind of dream up of, how would you make bring something alive artificially? So well, she, so the thing about it though is kinda that cl- kind of close, maybe. I mean, we can't do well, it. Well, the thing but. about it though is that in the novel, that's just what I was going to say yeah. is that you know how like uh, most of the movie adaptations have lightning, right? So yeah. everybody kind of assumes that that's what happened in the book. In the book, she doesn't really specify like how he gets brought to life it's kind of like she kind of implies that it was lightning that it no she doesn't imply that it was lightning she implies that there's alchemical stuff she just says something about like dark processes and things like that so she just leaves it real vague okay so the movie actually is filling in the gaps of what she said yeah i mean well the thing about it is that i think why uh, so many movie adaptations you know immediately go to lightning one because it makes sense and two because one of the things that gave mary shelley the idea for the book in the first place was galvanism. Yeah, shock in the dead. Like shock in the dead frogs and stuff yeah. like that. That was one of the things. So I don't think she put that in the book exactly. Right. But it was either implied or so I think that that's kind of why the, like a lot of people picked up on the lightning. But this is the first doing, one that I've seen that doesn't have actual lightning. In when it. they were doing that, that was a cultural sensation. Everybody would know that you could shock these frogs and these dead bodies and they'd move. They yeah. Guy, they had a guy in Italy that was re- put on whole shows. You know, you well, yeah, that's that. what. Well, that's where she got the so idea from the idea, because right. they were all talking about so it. So I would think that if you read this book when it was new, you would know what it was she was talking about. Yeah, and so they even they, in this movie they make reference to it yeah. too because he's kind of like doing the frog and yeah and all this other kind of stuff. But yeah, so this. Okay, so this hue's like pretty close. Like I said, they have the whole like framing story of the Arctic where, you know, they find Dr. Frankenstein. And he's like, I'm up here chasing the monster. The monster kills all the dogs, which again makes him a little less sympathetic, but okay. Um, you know, uh, and so then he's like, hey, I got to tell you this like crazy fucking story. Listen to this shit. The, the captain's played by Aiden Quinn, by the way. Um, he's only in this for probably the like Duke five Amadeus minutes. is in it. Yeah, well, I had forgotten. Tom yeah. Hulse yeah. plays uh, Henry Cherval, who is you know uh, Doctor Frankenstein's friend, like at university. Yeah, and he's in the so, same costume and everything. I was calling him Amadeus, like, Amadeus the, whole, like, the, whole like the whole time. I was yeah. like, look, he's best friends with, Wolf, with yeah, Amadeus, man. Wolfie. Yeah. there he is. But yeah, it's uh, he's actually really good in this. And even though he's an American actor, and like most of the other ones are Brits, it's like he doesn't like. He doesn't stand out. He doesn't really stand out. Like, I don't think... He's not not necessarily, like, trying to do a British accent. He kind of is, but it's not, like, real jarring. You know what I mean? It and seems I, natural to me. Yeah, that's... It, it just seems like his natural voice. It's yeah. not super weird. It doesn't It doesn't stick out, like I said, like... Winona it sounded Ryder like it was Keanu. transatlantic more than anything That's else. kind of what I was thinking. That's like probably he what an, he went with. Yeah, I think it was just... A, it was an American accent. An, old, an archaic American accent. I like that he provided a lot of, like, comic relief. Like, yeah. not super zany, but I like that he just kind of was, was very sardonic and, like, kind of, yeah. like, said funny shit. Yeah, and Helena Bonham Carter plays... This is star-studded, you guys. I'd forgotten. Helena Bonham Carter plays Elizabeth, uh, you know, Frankenstein's sister-slash-love interest. She, she's not she's his... Not his she's not his real sister. Yeah. She was like... She's essentially... She's well, she's adopted. like an orphan. Yeah. Because her parents died of scarlet fever. And like I said, I think that happened in the book, too. Um, I don't know if they were, like, a distant r- relative or something, but it wasn't that weird. Like, it didn't strike me as that weird, like, in the book like they didn't see it as weird so you know um Frankenstein's dad is Ash the robot from yeah Ian, Ian Holm I was gonna yeah, say yeah. he's in this he's too great, isn't it? Yeah, yeah he's also great uh yeah. John Cleese is in it yeah uh with some fake uh teeth yeah and he, and he, <laughs> and he plays a serious role he's not being funny he's great though he's good I really like him I just, I, and honestly he 
I think he should have been in a little bit more because he was really good in it. But he's basically like one of Frankenstein's professors. Yeah, he's like one yeah. of his mentors. He's yeah. like the one that is at the school, and he's like, "Ooh, I I dabbled in some of this shit, and you yeah, shouldn't brought, do it." He created a, he created a life form and destroyed it, but he wouldn't talk much about it. Said it was horrible. Yeah, and so, he's like, so he "You should totally it. not do it." Frankenstein's yeah. like, "Oh, I'll gotta do, do it. it. Yeah. I, I gotta do so it." So he I'm did. Sorry. Like, yeah. So Frankenstein's fucking buddy. Uh, uh, it's not his. It's not his uh, professor. It's one of the professors. Yeah, at the at the university. Who was yeah. listening to listening to Frankenstein's comments? He's going, oh, he, he's on. He he knows what he's talking about. He he's talk, He wants to bring back the dead. I did that. That's what he's thinking. You he's know? like, bitch. I bet. And they got Please him in don't. on the secret. He's like, yeah, he had a whole handbook and everything. Things that he did that worked. And um, so Frankenstein actually didn't come up with it all on his own. His his buddy did it before him. So yeah. So it's not like Frankenstein did it did it on his own. It's just that evidently his Frankenstein approved on the process. Isn't that right? Didn't well, he, he, he on yeah. It? He said basically he what that guy made some mistakes. Yeah, he said he was so close because right. that guy, like John Cleese, ends up getting killed. Yeah. Like not too long after he gets ends up getting stabbed, and um, so he dies, and so. Frankenstein it's like woohoo I'm just gonna go in there and like steal all this shit that's right it, he created a living thing but in the notes it says it didn't work it was not functional like it was all fucked up it was yet. all fucked up it Which... had birth defects and it did and it what do you say what was the word he used non non-functional and nobody said it was non-functional something like that non, yeah something like that. Or he said, I can't remember like the word he used exactly yeah, monstrous you... or something I don't well, know if it was, was just one of the words yeah but he said it like it didn't really work out, and then he, then he was just like, bro, what the fuck am I even doing? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and then like, he's yeah. like, let's not do that again. Right. I mean, probably he should have destroyed the notes if he was that, like, you know, if he, if yeah. he felt that strongly about it. But because as soon as he dies, because he, like, dies in the next scene, like, he gets stabbed, and then Frankenstein's like, woohoo, and so he just pilfers his fucking notes. And so, like, he goes through the shit, and then he's like, oh, he was so close, like, he was just one. I don't think that, that John Cleese had hit on the amniotic fluid thing. So that was his kind of improvement. So he's like, woo, this is going to work. Yeah. And I mean, it does work, but not quite. Now, I don't think this might be a change from the book, too. Because I think in the book, Frankenstein just like dug up, you know, whatever, like murderers they hung that day, which does happen in this because he actually takes the body, well, most of the body of the dude that stabbed John Cleese. But he pops John Cleese's brain into it. Yeah. Now, it, does that happen in the book? I don't know. I don't think so. It wasn't a criminal mind in it. He, he had, yeah. It was a normal it's a brain. smart guy it's brain. A smart guy brain, yeah. And then, like, he took... I think he took a couple other pieces. Like, he took a leg here and there. Because yeah. everybody... There's a cholera epidemic, like, going on yeah, during this. There, which, yeah. like I said, that was from the book, too. So I like that they kind of added that in. But I don't remember if he actually, like, took that professor's brain and like popped it into like a criminal's body essentially they do kind of go into he popped it into the body of the guy who killed him yeah and i'd be like if yeah. like if i woke up it's yeah. like if somebody murdered me and you put my brain into like the murderer's body i'd be like dude oh that's fucked up what yeah. are you even doing why would you do that he didn't mean to kill him but he, he stabbed him yeah so he so yeah fight over them polio vaccine was it uh, cholera. cholera vaccine. it was cholera yeah, yeah, he didn't want to take it. Yeah. He, so then he's he like, does. "Well, I'm just gonna stab the doctor, and then I'll die. Well, not a hold of, not of cholera, yeah, but I'll yeah, just get, I'll get yeah. hanged instead. Yeah, they so hung that's him better, instead. Yeah. I guess. Good job. Yeah. But um, you know, he was like, panicked. I guess so. He was panicked. <laughs> I was like, yeah. He only he only had one leg anyway. They had to give him another leg. That's right. That's he, why he had to go cut off. The, he's yeah. like, hey, where's the cholera? Where's all the dead bodies from cholera? Yeah. Ooh, this looks like a nice leg. Yeah. I'll just be taking this one home. Bye. But you know what I mean? It's like kind of yeah. But uh, so yeah, I don't think that's from the book, but that kind of works out though because I guess it kind of just keeps it less random now let's talk about too here's another kind of big change from the book in the book and please correct me because like i said it's been a while since i've read it in the book um the monster comes back to him and basically says i'm gonna fuck up all your shit like i'm gonna kill all your family unless you make me a bride because you know at this point the monsters he's all like fucked up looking and he's been like you know, uh, attacked. Everybody thinks he's like scary and everything like that. So he's like, well, I need one person that's like me, um, you know, and we can go off together and we won't bother anybody ever again. So the doctor says, okay, yeah, I'll do that. But in the book, I don't think he either never makes her 
or he makes her and then before he wakes her up he's like what the fuck am i doing and destroys her you know what i mean i think that's what happens in the book i don't think he ever makes her and she wakes up and everything like that what they did in the movie though and it's like i kind of think this was an okay decision i mean i guess if you're gonna go in this go this way because it did it did like raise the stakes some because i don't remember who he got like to reanimate for the bride in the book but like i said i don't think he ever reanimated her in the book what he does with this one is that he um he's like okay well i'll make you a bride and the creature brings him justine who is the girl that he had framed for killing his little brother, William. The f he's like five or six or yeah, something. Yeah, it's going to seem very convoluted if you haven't seen this movie. Yeah, well, like I mean, the about. story of Frankenstein is yeah. so... It's kind of... Everybody Everybody knows, kind of knows it. Knows each other, and they kill each other, and then they end up inside the damn same monster with somebody else. Like Frankenstein's body was the dude who killed a brilliant scientist that was used to go inside that fucking body. And that guy also made another Frankenstein before that Frankenstein. Yeah. So there's a lot of... It's like a Russian nesting doll. It's kind of like Reanimator. <laughs> it's kind of like Reanimator. Well, yeah, I mean, Reanimator the same kind of thing was kind of happening. Your girlfriend dies, so we had to reanimate her and put her in this one, and this one comes, and then then another reanimated guy tries to have sex with the new reanimated girlfriend. And he, the Reanimator series is crazy like that, too. Which, well, yeah, and I do yeah. kind of feel like, well, yeah, I mean, there's a reason why this story is like resonated for so long. Yeah. But yeah, so what they did, so the monster brings him the body of Justine because Justine, who was their, um, it was their housekeeper's daughter, yeah? yeah. And like a friend of the family. Yeah. She was like a friend of the family. And um, the monster kills William, who is Frankenstein's little, little brother, who's like many, many years younger. He's about six. Yeah, he's like six years old. So the monster kills him. Justine is out looking for the kid because they don't know he's dead yet. They're like looking for where he went to. And then she falls asleep in a barn for some reason. Re reason. And the monster comes. She's out late. Yeah. She the, said she was tired. She yeah. Was, it, the monster comes and essentially like leaves a locket that the little boy had had and leaves it on her. So like frames her yeah. for the little boy's murder. So then they take Justine into custody. A big mob comes, pulls her out the jail and like takes her up on the roof, puts a, ro a rope around, and just like fucking throws her off the roof, man. It's yeah. like a pretty horrifying. She falls like four stories before the fucking rope gets tight. And normally, it would have pulled her head off. But I would think they yeah. used to do that. Kind in of in real life, it probably would pull her, her head off. off. But... Can I just say there was a great moment? I can't remember the name of the woman that plays Justine because she's not like a. Yeah. I mean, she's in it, but it's not like a huge character. But the moment that they put that rope around her neck and she realizes what's about to happen, yeah. what a great moment of acting that was. Yeah. She looked fucking terrified. Yeah. And I was like, and I was like, ooh, I th okay, that was good. Like that yeah. whole reaction that she had was like yeah. so fucking great. The lynch mob got her. Yeah, it was like horrible. And that was how that's that was how the creature was getting getting um, revenge for what the what had been done to him because uh, basically a lynch mob was after him too. Yeah, so, because, and they, and, right. like, he comes into town, like, looking for bread or something, and they're like, hey, what yeah. the fuck, why are you stealing bread? And then his hood comes off, and they see his all fucked up looking yeah. face, and they said, oh, you're the guy that's causing all the cholera. Yeah. Because that's, of course, another, what they another, would think. Another great touch is that, is that she was just, he was hiding uh, in the courthouse, and the lawyers were going like, no, this is illegal, this is illegal, the lynch mob took him anyway. Took her anyway. Took yeah. her anyway, yeah. So. But they tried to fucking protect her, but it wasn't any good. Yeah, it was so, like a thousand people. I mean, that was a scary. I thought that yeah. was like a pretty scary, like an effective scene yeah. that they did because I was like, "Whoa, okay, that's like that's yeah." Fucked vi up. Visually, all the sets and everything they look pretty authentic. The the costumes are real good. They look period. Uh, the movie looks a lot better than I remembered it. It looks it looks good, like yeah. you know, on par with like Amadeus or something. Yeah. yeah, but the yeah. So the monster brings Justine's body, and Frankenstein is like, no. He's like, I'm not. Yeah. And the monster is like, yeah, but you just said, like, all these bodies are just, what do they call them? Raw materials. Yeah, he's like, so it there. shouldn't matter, like, that you knew this girl. And yeah. he's just like, man, I'm not doing it. And he's like, you you better do it or I'm going to, like, fuck up all your family. He's like, no, I'm not going to do it. So, so he goes. see me on your wedding night. Yeah, so he, and that's yeah. from the book. That's actually right from the book, um, yeah. that, that quote that he says. So he's like, yeah, well, if you don't do it, then uh, I'll be with you on your wedding night. Like, if you yeah. won't give me a wedding night, I'll be with you on yours or something like yeah. that. So that's, like, right from the book. And uh, Vic and Frankenstein, who's kind of like a dumbass, he doesn't understand, I don't think, the implications of that. 
He just thinks that he just thinks that the monster wants to kill him, even though he's already killed his brother. Well, no, he says he says so. If you're gonna kill me, you know you're gonna kill me. And he goes, no, nah, kill. Basically, he, the, the creature says killing you is the easy way out. You know, basically, he's like that. He goes, what I'm gonna? You no, know, he says that would be easy on you. Yeah, killing you because he's gonna make it worse than that, which he, he's threatening everybody he knows. Yeah, you which know. he does in the book which also. He does, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, so he, yeah, he's already killed his ki- the kid. He frames Justine, who also gets killed. And then, uh, you know, Frankenstein's like, no, I'm not going to, you know, make you a bride. So, of course, he gets mad. And he goes in there and straight up, like, he marries Elizabeth. Uh, and she, they're, they're, they haven't even, like, had sex yet. They haven't even consummated the marriage. It's like the wedding night. And they're just like, woohoo, finally, like, after all, because they've known each other since they were kids. Uh, and so... But then, like, somebody's like, oh, we saw the monster outside. So he's like, hold that thought. I'll be right back. And then the monster ends up in the room and straight up pulls her fucking heart right out of her chest. Yeah. Pop! Yeah, he's strong. He's real strong. Pop! Yeah. Just pulls it right out. Yeah. And, and then, need a blade. not only that, her. but it's like as if that wasn't undignified enough. Yeah. He then, like, just knocks her body off the bed and it fell, falls into a lamp and, like, her head catches on fire. Yeah, it burns all her hair and off. And it burns all of her hair off. And big patches and shit. Yeah. yeah. So then, Frankenstein, and this did not happen in the book, Frankenstein says, Oh, well, I can bring her back to life. And I'm just like, Bro, have you not yeah. learned anything, like, through this whole entire. Didn't you watch Reanimator? <laughs> didn't you watch, re- didn't you watch yeah. Frankenhooker? Yeah. This is the same thing that happened in Frankenhooker, yeah. okay? Yeah. So he basically, he's like, Well,. Uh, I, you know, I want to keep her head, but her body's kind of, like, uh, fucked up because she doesn't have a heart. So he's like, oh, well, coincidentally, like, conveniently, Justine's body's still laying here. So I'll yeah. just pop Elizabeth's head off and yeah. put it onto Justine's body. Yeah. Um. So he just kind of mashed, mashed them together. And then yeah. he, like, brings her back, and yeah. she's uh, not super happy about it. No, and then the creature sees her, and he goes, that's mine! That's mine! She's mine! And, they, and then they... They get into the fucking tug of war. They're like, like, I, I totally thought her arms were going to pull yeah. off like Sally from Nightmare Before Christmas. Yeah, the, the, bri- the bride's trying to choose which one she goes wants to go with, and she actually chose the creature. Uh, but then, at the end, Doctor Victor fucking gets her to look at him, and then she fucking glitches out and grabs a damn oil. Lamp well, she looks. She looks head. at the creature's face, and then she's yeah. like, "Oh shit, that's what my face looks like too." Because yeah. her face, she looks really yeah, fucked and she up. She grabs a. Because by the time this was all happening, the creature was looking better than he did. The stitches and shit fucking got pulled out. He was he was healing up. So that was a nice touch. I liked that. Yeah, he started to he started to look just like you know Robert De Niro. Really, yeah, with a scar on his face. So you know he wasn't ugly, really. He was fucking intimidating looking, spooky looking. But I wouldn't say he was ugly. Not you know as bad as once fucking, it started to once heal it started up. To heal up. Yeah. yeah. And then um, she glitched out and fucking grabbed. Uh, oil lamp and held it over her head crushed it and all the fucking burning oil went and she fucking it was a great stunt it was it it was not cg it was a a woman in what looked like a bridal gown running at full speed through the fucking hallways setting the damn internal of the castle on fire and she jumps out the window she died but it was a it was a good stunt it was a whoever that was was fully on fire it looked real yeah it looked like a woman's build you know, well, yeah, they got women stuntmen yeah, that women do fire do. stunts. So, yeah. I mean, or or it was it might it could have been a dude. I'm not really sure, but I, was, I wasn't really looking. It that looked close. like fucking Helen Carter running on fire. I running. think how they did the close up yeah. of when she first broke the lamp. I think yeah. that that was like the head and stuff like that. I think was a dummy, mm-hmm. but then they superimposed her face okay. over it somehow, like because they did have some digital effects in the it 90s. Good, yeah. They just weren't really all that great. Yeah, well, but. The, the running part where she was running on fire through yeah, the hallways, it looked that was, real. That was just somebody, then, like an actual stunt person. Yeah, but it looked like a, body-wise, that looked like her in a, in a wedding ground. She jumped off the fucking top of the staircase. and looked, whoosh, She fell probably about two, three stories, huh? Through yeah. That open, there are big open spaces inside the houses, the living room, the entryway was like, you know, <laughs> like an aircraft hangar in there. The fucking house was big. I but, mean, uh, it's, I mean, Victor... The whole thing was that he's like, well, I don't want to make Justine into a monster because I know her. But then, like, as soon as his wife dies, he's like, oh, okay, never mind. I'll just, you know, pop this girlfriend's head and I'll just, like, I'm like, 
He's he's just fully like lost his fucking mind at this point. So Victor Frankenstein loses everything, man. He loses his fucking family, loses his house, fucking everything burnt down to the ground. So he starts fucking chasing his Frankenstein to the fucking because his dad dies in yeah, there too. Yeah, his dad I don't died. think the monster. I don't know if the monster killed him or if he just I, died of. Yeah, yeah. I didn't that see wasn't any marks on him. Didn't see yeah, any marks on him. It looked like he just died. And like maybe died of a heart attack from seeing him. Yeah. And uh, seeing the seeing the creature. But um, he chases the creature up to the North Pole. That's when they run to the dam. They run into the dam expedition that's up there. It's pretty cool because the guy, the captain of the ship that's hearing this whole story, by the, when he does finally see uh, 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 the creature, he's kind of got respect for the creature. At one time towards the end, after Victor Frankenstein dies, he asks the creature to... To join the crew. Yeah, he's like, come with come us. Come on, with, come with us. And he's down in the water, and he's holding the damn torch, and he's going, no, I'm through with man. I'm through with man. Yeah, he's like, fuck this and shit. And he goes out to a damn iceberg where, where he's got Victor Frankenstein's body on a damn pyre, or pyre ready to go, and he sets him and Victor Frankenstein on fire and, and sets himself on fire. He's out there on an iceberg burning. I think that's how the book ends too. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's like. Yeah, so he gives accurate. his own life. He says, "Fuck it." He takes his own life. He's like, "I'm done with this shit." Well, he like goes I said, down like a G, all proud, fucking standing there while he's burning up. He's like, "I didn't ask to be here." Yeah, I'm just, I know I like fuck some shit up and kind of like a Viking funeral. <laughs> it was, yeah, yeah, kind of like a Viking funeral. Uh, but Viking yeah, Viking funeral and what happened to fucking Darth Vader at the end of fucking <laughs> Empire Strikes Back or fucking yeah. Or, Return to the Jedi. Well, that's the thing is like Frankenstein yeah. is such an iconic novel that yeah. even things that aren't related to Frankenstein have used like things from that too. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because it's just like penetrated the the cultural so much. But like I said, I'm gonna have to see Frankenstein Unbound because I heard that one was like kind of similar to the book too. Although I heard that the movie wasn't very good. But I liked Dracula Untold. I did too. Yeah, yeah. I liked those. I don't know if it's the same director. Yeah. But um, but I'm I'm not sure. I have to look it up. But yeah, I mean, if you want to see uh, a very a you know, th there's some changes obviously, uh, you know, that we've kind of got into. But this is the probably the most accurate to the book of any Frankenstein movie I've seen. I'm sure there are some that I haven't seen that are maybe more accurate. I heard there was another one that was like made for TV that was actually pretty good and pretty accurate to the book. I forgot to mention that actually. Not the first draft of the script. That was written by somebody named um, Steph Lady. But the second version of the script was actually written, uh, for this movie, was actually written by Frank Darabont. Um, and he did not like this movie at all. Hmm. Uh, he was like, well, he said, the quote was something like, and I'm paraphrasing, but he says something like, I think it was the best script I ever wrote and the worst movie that I ever saw, like, based on a script that I ever wrote. Well, he's like, because he's like, how I had it on the page, he's like, I tried to make it as close to the book as possible. And he's like, the book is actually pretty subtle. Um, he's like, so everything that you see, like, this wildly, like, over-the-top kind of, like, operatic type of stuff, he's like, that's not in the book, and that wasn't in my script. The he's like, like, that was Kenneth Branagh's thing. It, it's not over-the-top by today's standards. That's I not, think I think it's more over-the-top by today's know. standards. I don't know. I didn't really find it all that unusual. I thought the tone was about kind of like the old, kind of like Bram Stoker's Dracula with, with it was about like that. I, I didn't, there wasn't a big difference. I'd have to watch them both back was, to back. I thought it was enjoyable. I thought it was enjoyable. I did too. I didn't say that. Yeah, I, thought it was I just enjoyable. said that I had forgot that it was like more over the top than I remember. Well, it I was being. trying to be very theatrical and classical. Yeah. And and, and big. Everything's big, you know. But and, and and you know it worked. I think. Uh, you know, had the sets been a little more stylized, I don't know. It's hard to say. It's hard to say. Yeah, because I think the Dracula say. one was more. That worked because, it, like I said, it looked more theatrical yeah. because it was more, uh, you know, stylized. It didn't look realistic. Yeah, it's not supposed to be very realistic. This one, it looks realistic. It looks pretty realistic. But it, then, like, it's kind and of, like, the stagey. acting is stagey. Right yeah. Now. Until De Niro gets in there. Right. I they, mean, because he's very... I think they were trying to say that he's the only real person. Yeah, like, the he's meaning of the fucking, restrained. The meaning, of, the meaning of the story is, fuck y'all. Y'all suck, and y'all don't know what's cool. Dracula, I mean, excuse me, uh, fucking the creature knew what was cool. That you know, there was some philosophy involved. 
Well, the whole point of the story was that you you shouldn't uh, step on God's dick. Don't step on God's dick. (laughs) Um, Don't judge things. Don't judge people for how they look. That too. That's another one. Y'all are a bunch of superficial motherfuckers, out of control. (laughs) Bitch bobs killing people right in front of right in front of the damn court systems that you ignore. You know, it's just stuff like that. You know, y'all are the monsters, not me. That's the that's the. That's, that's the, I mean, that's he the, did monster, the monster did monstrous things too, but I think that, I mean, Mary Shelley was kind of like trying to say, it's that's almost kind of, thing, that's that was like, he, he, he was do. like your child. He was like yeah. your creation. You brought him into this yeah. world. Like he didn't ask to be here yeah. and you didn't teach him anything. You brought him yeah. here and then you abandoned him. Yeah, right, right. I think in the book, it was more clear that he abandoned the monster. Like, fuck that. That didn't work. Bye. Yeah. It was kind of like that. Whereas in the movie... He thought that the monster had died of cholera, or he assumed that the monster had died of yeah. cholera, and like a dumbass, he didn't check. Yeah. Probably should have checked on that, the, the, uh, but he didn't. The monster was uh, left on his own and was trying to survive out in the wild and was trying to make friends and it sometimes would make friends. Only the blind man wanted to be his friend, and, and, and even though the blind man knew he was, he knew that he was, uh, his face was fucked up. And at the, it just in a split second, some people chased him off, hitting him with a stick, you know, because they thought he was attacking the old man. Yeah. Uh, it's just, you know. He killed their landlord for him. He killed the landlord. And brought in all of their crops. Yep. And did a, did a bunch of work for him. Yeah. And the landlord was, like, was beating people and fucking throwing the kid around and shit. Yeah. I mean, no one was sad to see the yeah, landlord. Yeah. The landlord, was, <laughs> landlord was a dick. <laughs> you know. So he kind of had it coming. So... But, uh, but yeah, Frankenstein was like a, the uh, the Frankenstein monster. The, the creature was a good-hearted creature, and he was intelligent. And people kept fucking him over, and that yeah. turned him frustrated him. And says, "Well, if you don't, if you know, it, it was kind of like eye for an eye. Well, if you're gonna fuck me over, I'm gonna fuck you over." You know? And if no one will yeah. react to me with love and compassion, right, then I'm, I'm just gonna, gonna right. like fucking rage out. Which, right. like I said, that's you know, that's right. it's a very yeah, it's a very of, universal. Yeah, it's a th- it's like a human theme, you know. And the thing about it is that even though he did monstrous things, Victor was the real monster because he didn't take responsibility for one, he's st- for stepping on God's dick and like going yeah. all like hubris and everything. Yeah. But also like he then he made the it he didn't and then the he creature. didn't yeah, so he just like unleashed it on the world. It was like, "Well, I washed yeah. my hands of that." That's you know what I mean? The creature considered him his father. So, yeah. you know what I mean? It's like he didn't raise it. Yeah. So it's a morality tale, you know. You it is it is drama, you know. You can tell a teenage girl wrote it, but a very intelligent teenage girl, and it makes sense. And it's the the story holds up. It's it's in that old fashioned found footage motif, you know what I mean? Style, which I hate reading. I hate reading that shit. Although the but Frankenstein was, was, one isn't really that bad, because yeah. pretty much there's just like. The, the beginning and the end, yeah, you know, with that. but And then the rest of it's no, just, it like, yeah, it's, reads do pretty what, regular. Didn't do with the regular Dracula. What real Dracula? What Dracula. Dracula, Dracula was, was entirely like yeah. that. was, so, like, all journal entries and stuff. And, you know, I think she wrote this on a, on a basically kind of like a challenge, I think. Like a dare, it, yeah. It was like a dare type of deal. They were saying they had to come up with some kind of a ghost story for, was it Christmas? Was no, they were just. No, there, was a just, or something no, there wasn't. Um, there was a they were just all. We did a show about it. Yeah. Uh, it happened. It was her and Lord Byron and Percy yeah. Shelley and uh, John Polidori. They and were they like were a thruple. They were all. They were all kind of like. Well, they were all into like kind of yeah. the enlightenment, kind of like free love and all that kind yeah. of stuff. Um, but yeah, they were all trapped in their uh, villa like on one yeah. summer because of it was you know the year without a summer. It was just like two weeks of torrential rains and they couldn't leave. They, yeah. they couldn't do stuff outside, so they kind of like were trapped inside reading ghost stories. Yeah, to one if you guys another. don't know what that is, is it was a volcano went off. Yeah. And it eighteen sixteen blackened, blackened the skies and it fucked up like a couple of years worth of weather. Um, I think it. It was really one harvest season. I think it was. Really it was good yeah, one or the, two. I mean, eighteen sixteen that yeah. summer was the worst one. Like they yeah. had like crazy fucking weather. Yeah. Um, like a lot of the crops didn't. Failed. Yeah, a lot of the crops failed because it never got warm enough. Like in certain parts of the world and stuff like that. Yeah. But I yeah, don't know. did did they know what it was? I don't think Mary Shelley. That, At the time, I don't think, I don't think so. I think yeah. maybe like a little bit later, but I could be wrong about that. Yeah, the but sky that's, was the sky was red for several days. I think. Right after that, wasn't it? Like uh, the sky was red. Yeah. For like a week, two weeks. Yeah. And then, it was, then uh, the weather went crazy. It was a big deal. It was a big uh, explosion. If it were to happen today, people would think that it was the end of the world. 
And back then, they were just like, well, that's some weird. That's some weird shit. Yeah, they, they didn't even know what it was. <laughs> this yeah. weather is quite Extreme annoying. Weather. Yeah. <laughs> Guess we got to stay in here and write some of the most classic yeah. things ever. Well, and the uh, other thing, too, is that, and I think we brought this up on the show where we talked about Mary Shelley and that. Um, John Polidori was there, too, and he actually wrote... Uh, the Penny Dreadful, The Vampire, with a Y, uh, which is maybe one of the inspirations for uh, Dracula. Okay. Although they think that maybe he ripped the idea off from Lord Byron, because Lord Byron wrote something about a vampire, too. But yeah, so this was like way before Dracula came out, because Dracula was like toward the end of the 19th century. Yeah. Frankenstein came out in 1818. Yeah. So yeah, it's much, much older. So there's that. And like I said, Mary Shelley kind of like invented science fiction pretty much basically uh basically yeah so because this was kind of the first story that had been like that or at least like the first one was like a big sensation but yeah so um this movie is actually on hbo max if you haven't seen it um you know give it a watch and see because i hadn't seen it like probably since i'd seen it in the theater like i said it was a lot more over the top than i remember but it's still like really enjoyable and it's still pretty accurate to the book they did change some things around but it's it follows the beats of the novel like pretty closely which is uh, pretty admirable and it's really kind of like all-star i love the makeup they did on de niro i really liked uh, de niro's thing the set design the costumes the score is nice too uh, i i really like that a lot but yeah i mean it's totally worth watching and i think now the, remember when we did the the um movie that had michelle pfeiffer and uh jack nicholson in it that was called wolf yeah I don't remember if that was the Wolfman installment of this cycle mm -hmm. or if the Wolfman with Benicio Del Toro was. I don't know. And I really want to watch that again, too, because I remember seeing that in the theater also. And, like, well, I like Benicio Del Toro and anything. But I remember that being pretty good, but I don't really remember anything about it. But then I was just kind of like, well, wait, I don't. I don't remember, like, what cycle that was part of. Because they've tried to, like, do all of these, like, Universal Monster reboots, like, multiple times. Why don't they do Creature from the Black Lagoon, though? Hmm. hmm. I don't know. I really like that one. But anyway. Yeah, so this is on HBO Max. Uh, check it out if you've seen it or if you haven't seen it in a long time. Let us know what you think about it in the comments. And that'll do it for this movie retrospective. We'll see you guys on the next one. Bye.